Welcome again to ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we will learn about iOptions Monitor. Let's open Visual Studio. In the previous videos, we have covered iOptions and iOptions Snapshot. This iOptions work on the singleton pattern and the iOptions Snapshot work on the scope pattern. In ASP.NET Core, you cannot use an scope service inside singleton service. Let me explain what does it mean. Suppose I have one more repository in my project. Let's add a new repository. Let's right click, add, click on the class. Suppose here I have message repository. And this message repository has one method. Let's create an interface for this particular repository. Right click, choose this one and extract interface. Let's click on the OK button. This new interface has been created for us and now we need to register this service by using singleton pattern. Let's go back to our startup class. So here I need to write the interface i message repository and in the second parameter I can pass the message repository. Perfect. And we need to register it by using singleton pattern. Just like this. Now suppose I want to read the settings from my app settings.json file into this new message repository here. So how can we do that? We simply need to create a constructor over here and in the constructor we need to inject our service. To inject the service either we can use iOptions or we can use iOptions snapshot. Let's first start with the iOptions. Let's copy this code from here. Let's update the name of this constructor. Let's resolve the namespace. First, suppose I want to work with i options, and by using this field, I want to return the value from this configuration. Dot book name. Perfect. Now let's use the singleton service into our home controller. So here, let's put a comma, and here I can use i message repository. Let's generate a field quickly. Let's use the underscore and remove this this keyword. Now here in this index method, suppose I want to get the value from this message repository. How? Where value is equals to. We have only one method in this repository. Let's use that method and that's it. Let's run this application in debug mode this time. So here we have some value and this value is coming from our app settings. Let's click on the continue button. Remember this i options work on the singleton pattern and suppose I want to update some values into our app settings.json file. So here let's update some value. Let's save the changes. Again go back to the browser. Refresh this page. Okay let's see what we got over here. Here you can notice that we do not have the updated values. Let's click on the continue button. If you are using i options, it means it works only on the singleton pattern. So we do not have the updated value over here. In the previous video, to reload the values, we have used i options snapshot service. Let's try to use that service over here. Let's stop this application. Go back to our message repository. And here instead of using this i options, let's use i options snapshot. Let's save the changes and run this application again in debug mode. Here you can notice that we are having an exception. Let's click on the continue button and let's focus on the error. Some services are not able to be constructed. Why? Because we are using the scope service inside an singleton service and here is the message. Invalid operation exception error while validating the service descriptor. This is the service type and the lifetime is singleton and here inside the singleton we are trying to use the scoped service and that is why we are getting this error. So how can we resolve this problem? Instead of using this snapshot, I need to use monitor service. Let's save the changes. Here I have written i options monitor and immediately you can see that we have a red line under this value property. So we can't use this value property on this i options monitor. Let's remove this value. Now, instead of using this value, we need to use the current value property. 
Let's save the changes and run this application again in debug mode. Okay, let's see what we got in this value. So we have the updated name. Let's click on the continue button. The UI is working fine. Without stopping this application, let's update the settings into our app settings.json file. Let's remove this updated from here and let's save the changes. Go back to the browser, refresh this page. Here you can notice that still we do not have the updated value. Why we do not have the updated value? Because we have registered this message repository class as a singleton repository. That is why the constructor of this class will be called only once. And since we are using this only once, that is why we do not have the updated value. So how can we access the updated value over here? Let's see how to do that. Here, let's use this new configuration field and let's call an on change method on this field. Let's use the lambda expression and here we need to assign the latest value to this field. Let's save all the changes. Again here you can notice that we are having an red line. So let's focus on the error. It, it says a read only field cannot be assigned. So we need to remove this read only property from here. Let's save the changes. This time the error is gone. Let's run this application again in debug mode. Okay, let's focus on the value. So we have the current value. Let's click on the continue button. Again, let's go back to our configuration here. Let's update the value. Save the changes. Refresh this page and let's see what we got in this value this time. This time you can notice that we have the updated value even in the singleton repository. Let's click on the continue button. If you do not want to use this approach, then you can simply remove it from here. And then you need to use this I options monitor for this field also. So let's use again the read only like this. And here in this method, let's use the current value and then the book name. So this is the second approach. Let's again save the changes and run this application in debug mode. So what is the value? This is the latest value. Click on the continue button. Let's update the setting in app settings.json file. Let's remove this up from here. Save the changes. Refresh this page. Let's see what we got this time. This time we have the updated value. These are two ways to get the latest value in your singleton repository. That is all in this video. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.